Hey kids, want to see some magic? <laughs> okay, I'm not actually a magician, but you can see a magic show on TV every day. Magicians rely on something called misdirection, making you pay attention to one thing while the trick itself is going on somewhere else. In that sense, a magic show is much like the political system itself. But it's also different, because first, we know and accept that the magician is tricking us, and second, the show ends and we're allowed to leave. The political system and its PR people in the media trick us every day, without our consent. Shouldn't we be talking about it? I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. One of my first videos for this channel was about voting. In it, I pointed out the enormous time, enormous amount of time, sorry, that voting as we know it actually takes. Because nobody only votes. They have to talk for hours with friends and strangers about whom they're going to vote for. For some people, it consumes all their time in discussions or arguments and even becomes part of their identity. Why do we spend so much time on something that has such a tiny impact? It's not entertaining like sports or movies. Well, because we're led to believe it's the only thing we can do to change anything. But that's nonsense. There are lots of things we could do to change things, and voting isn't one of them. We're just distracted from what's important. We're distracted by a 24-hour news cycle that plays a key role in setting the public agenda. The news decides what's important for us and what's important for all the other media. If some corporate news outlet says, this election is the most important election in our lifetimes, well, I guess we'd better put in extra effort to see that our candidate is elected, even though a little perspective would remind us that they say that every election. If the TV tells us this candidate is strong on national security, why, those are nice-sounding words, so I'm going to vote for that candidate, and it was totally my own idea. Mainstream news is the ultimate PR machine for the people in power. It's available all the time. It decides what's important and how you should think about everything, while at the same time making you think you reach those conclusions by yourself, and you're expected to feel ignorant and out of the loop, and therefore guilty, if you don't let them tell you what to think every day. Wow, that is some power over the mind. The media and the people in power have a symbiotic relationship. They rely on each other, even when one seems to be criticizing the other. In fact, it's quite normal for uh, editorials and opinion columns to criticize and for politicians to lash back. Criticizing one or another of the people in power or one or another media outlets does nothing, nothing, to change the structure of power. All the drama over the rise and fall of some given politician is just theater. I think paying attention to such trivialities is a big waste of our time. The spectacle exists to distract us, to tell us that the least important things that the system does are actually the most important. We see it every time the news spends an hour picking apart Donald Trump's latest tweet. Who cares what some guy wrote on Twitter? What is he actually doing? The most important decisions are made behind closed doors and rarely reach the media. Which journalists are talking about who Trump and his staffers are meeting with, and what are, their, what are they actually saying? That might be more interesting. 
When was the last time a story about Trump was accompanied by how many people his government has bombed or locked up without trial during his time in office? Or even better, how about a story about the incentives the system creates to drop bombs or lock people up? But then we would start questioning it. We talk about how a given politician is divisive, but the whole system is inherently divisive. It takes people or parties with small differences, and even those differences might be illusory, and it turns them into rival teams. I'm on blue team, so I'll spend hours of every day defending that team to the death against red team supporters. But why? We're talking about millions of people with similar interests. Instead of just hoping that your, your vote and your time is actually going to mean something, why not put it into things like educating yourself, educating others, building up your community? There's no way that, you're, that that time's going to be a loss. The political system divides the masses against each other in favor of the ruling elite and leads them to blame each other rather than the people making all the biggest decisions. Couldn't we be working together rather than against each other? We could be inviting them to join a movement that makes us independent. So we never have to worry about these popularity contests again. What are our priorities? We've seen the distraction machine working for the past year in every story about impeachment. It's a very slow process that didn't succeed, which never really had a chance of succeeding, as most of the people following politics actually already knew, and it wouldn't have made any worthwhile change if it had succeeded. Trump's impeachment was never going to affect your life, unless, of course, you let it. But some people put all their hopes into it. We saw the distraction machine this week, all eyes on Iowa for the Democratic Party presidential candidate debates, primaries, whatever it is. Do you think watching a party pick from among a few people who aren't really that different from each other, who might end up president, is worth hours of your time every day? Just yesterday I saw someone post this, this screenshot of a couple of foreign policy questions about something like, would you support regime change in another country? And under the questions it said that Pete but I don't know how to pronounce his name. He said, it said, he didn't answer the questions. And there were two questions like that. And you're supposed to angry react. Look, it doesn't matter what the candidates say. You're just distracted. Whoever becomes president will work for the foreign policy establishment. That's not going to change because of an election. Way too much is at stake. Nothing fundamental to the way the state works is going to change because of an election. I can assure you. Pete Butt must just not have prepared an answer to that one. I started losing faith in the in the political system around the time Barack Obama was first elected, and I realized there was no way he would do the things people expected him to. I saw his supporters interviewed. He's going to bring us all health care and better education, and give us jobs and help the economy, and so on and so on and so on, and none of those things ever really happened. Who made them think he was going to do all that? It was pure media image crafted for him by the best PR people of our time. Even today, people love him for being classy, or whatever other words the media told them to say, instead of questioning, admiring someone who killed and deported so many people and transferred trillions of dollars to huge corporations. 
What's to admire? If I did any of those things, I would be an outcast. But then, I don't have a PR team. Blame Barack himself for not living up to all your expectations of him, if you want. But one guy was never going to change the system. Whatever his intentions, whatever you assume his good intentions were, Blame the Republicans, if you prefer. They're proof that your guy will be hamstrung if he tries to do anything you think worth doing. Either way, you're blaming a small part of the system, rather than looking at the whole thing. And that's a result of misdirection. In all the countless hours Barack's supporters spent defending him, whether in the hope he would do something for them or out of fear of someone worse, they could have organized mutual aid organizations and solved half their problems. But they're not aware of alternative political organization. Look at the way the average news program is structured. You've got 10 minutes of news, things that actually happened, assuming the news is more or less telling the truth. Ten or fifteen minutes to talk about everything going on in the world. The things they talk about in that time are the things you're supposed to believe are important. Especially the stories they repeat every hour. You're glued to the news because you think it's important. And you think it's important because you're glued to it. So they'll talk about elections as long as they can, and won't even bring up the bombs dropping, or the kids in cages, or people who live in the streets, or why. Because somehow those things aren't as important. No, we shouldn't talk about things that matter. We should focus on the spectacle. We should talk about how Nancy Pelosi ripped up a copy of Trump's speech. Wow, a meaningless gesture she knew would get her on the news. And we should definitely ignore how she supported most of his policies. This nonsense about her ripping up some papers was trending on Twitter for days among her supporters and her distractors, uh, detractors because they have no conception of what actually matters. Then the news underscores that it's not about what's important by giving us 10 minutes of sports. Because who cares about preventing other people's suffering when there was a football game on yesterday? We're expected to think elections are important because that's the only way you and I can solve those problems, or the only way we're allowed to solve those problems. The only way you can have any impact on the political system, it implies, is by voting. So spend hours of every day talking about voting. Don't talk about how you could more directly stop the bombs from falling or free the people from those cages, or just make those decisions for yourself. Those questions are not on the news. And no candidate for office ever asks those questions. So those topics do not fall within the acceptable range of discourse. If any news organization talked about those things, everyone would either brand it an unreliable, radical leftist outlet that no one should take seriously, or just ignore it. Any kind of activism you want to engage in is supposed to be sanctioned by the state and the indoctrinated public, which means all you're allowed to do is campaign for one of these candidates and then put a ballot into a box. You're not allowed to affect anything directly, because then that would empower you. You've just got to hope your actions and your contributions will somehow, eventually, indirectly, lead to the things you've been told to hope for. Hope is a cornerstone of so-called democracy. Everything we do within the system is based on hope. We join the party in the hope they'll pick the right guy. We vote for the guy with the hope he'll win.
We campaign and contribute money and argue with people in the hope more people will vote for our guy. We cheer when they win, hoping they will actually do what they promise to do, and we cry when they lose, but don't let your hopes down, there's always next time. Or our candidate loses, but hey, here's another candidate we can hope for. Then something goes to the courts, and we wait and hope the courts decide the way we want them to, and then when they don't, we don't have to worry because we can spend a few more years and a few million dollars appealing the decision. The bottom line is, don't organize to oppose this system. Just keep waiting and voting hopefully. It's a cycle. You hope for change. You get let down, but then the system offers you someone else to put your hopes into. I have faith again. Well, you shouldn't. I know it's hard to let go, but you're in a textbook toxic relationship. And I've been talking about the news, but the same goes for the satire industry of late night comedy talk shows. They're funny and all, but they're not doing any good. Some of them paint themselves as subversive, but they rely just as much on the system as anyone. Make jokes about Donald Trump if you like. You're just making him stronger. Talk about the people you would rather see in power. You're just reinforcing people's empty hopes in the system. Where are the experts and comedians and panel shows talking about the system as a whole? Their job should be to illuminate the world for us, not pull the wool further down over our eyes. But then, they're mostly just as indoctrinated as everyone else. There's one thing I wanted to add uh, before I wrap up about conspiracies. A lot of people who realize the news and the political system are designed to distract us from what's really going on, then open their minds up, but open them a little too far and start to believe in all kinds of what are usually called conspiracy theories. I won't mention many, but, but think Flat Earth, for example. Humans have known the world was round for thousands of years, but suddenly with the internet it's flat again. It's good to be skeptical of what you've been told, just make sure that when you leave the lies of the political system, you're not diving into another pool of nonsense. If you don't know enough about the way the system works, learn about it. That's why this channel exists, or why all those other channels ex exist. It's why there are tons of books and websites and Wikipedia to learn about anything you want to explore further. If you want to know enough about the way it works, educate others. To that end, I suggest forming a Paulo Freire book club, or whoever you think would be better, of course. I say Freire because pedagogy of the oppressed would empower them and us to take our future into our own hands. And for sure, you can find it for free online and at some libraries. First, help them understand their situation, and then envision what's possible. Then, you can organize them around a goal. There are so many more things we could be doing to build up our communities, from starting communal gardens or libraries to training in self-defense. Learn about mutual aid and direct action. We could be building communities, or, or even wide-scale movements, that make it unnecessary to rely on the state or corporations. That way you don't have to rely on hope and faith. 